You know what? Everybody in life hits a fork in the road where they have to make a decision. Life is decision driven. It's choice driven. Hi, I'm Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to Ron Carpenter Television. What a joy, what a pleasure it is to be with you, especially in this new year. I hope that, I still call it a new year. I hope that in the first of this year that you have changed the things that you needed to change. You've made the decisions that you needed to make. When you have set the boundaries and set the lines, you haven't moved them, but you've stayed the course with whatever it is you have decided to do. Remember, today's decisions create tomorrow's harvest. So I got to determine today what I want my future to look like. Growing pains is what we're about to introduce to you because it has a lot to do with making the choices. What do we do when hardships come? What do we do when temporary storms arise? Where do you run to? Where do you go? What is your escape? What brings you peace? Or should I say, who do you escape to? Who brings you peace? We're going to look at a journey through the book of Ruth that's going to detail for you the journey that God wants to take in your life. Because Ruth is the story of how God can take you from the background to the forefront, from being a beggar to owning it all. You ready to go on this journey? Let's take it together. God bless as you watch. Hebrews 8, verse 4 and 5. Hebrews 8, verse 4 and 5. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law who serve as a copy and shadow of heavenly things. Talking about the Old Testament priest who would always slay the animals as a sacrifice to God and shed the blood. They were a copy. They were a shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make a tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern I showed you on the mountain. So the priest and the tabernacle in the Old Testament, they were a type and shadow of things to come. Hebrews 10, 1. For the law, the Old Testament law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things. Having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things. Lord, bless your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I am well aware that when a lot of people open the Bible, uh, it's foreign to them. And we have the classes like we have. They're, mod they're modestly attended. They're not highly attended. And we're looking at next year when we get our new management system put in, we're, we, we're having to go global, so we're having to change our management systems here. We're looking at putting all these things and making them available online, even things as basic as teaching you how to read your Bible. <laughs> but people get saved and they turn to Leviticus because they heard the preacher say, you're supposed to start reading your Bible. And it makes no sense. And they turn to First and Second Kings and they see kings and dates and kings and dates and kings. And, or they go to Matthew 1 and, and so-and-so begot so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so begot so-and-so. And, -so. and they're like, this is the most boring book in the whole world. I, I, this is brutal. I can't read this book. The fact is your Bible is divided into two parts. OT and UT. Old Testament, New Testament. The word testament means covenant. God has two covenants. God has cut two covenants in the earth. Two. Only two. There will never be another. There was an old covenant. There's a new covenant. You live in the new one. Jesus inaugurated, initiated, and perfected the new one. There is nothing left to be done. It is finished, Jesus said. You live in the new covenant. Everybody in the old one longed for what you get to enjoy. Every time a priest offered a sacrifice, they longed for what the day that we live in. Every time somebody worshiped in the temple, they longed for the day that we lived in. They longed for the lamb that would be slain from the foundations of the earth, and in him he would rescue all humanity. That person was Jesus Christ. But until then, they had a law that God gave them they had to live by, and keeping that law was impossible. God gave Israel. He started his old covenant with Israel. <clears throat> Excuse me. He initiated it with Abraham. And out of Abraham came a nation called Israel. Israel have 12 tribes, okay? 
and God made a covenant with them because when he got them out of 450 years of slavery, they had no judicial system. Listen, they had no moral code. They had no right and wrong. They had no nothing to live by. Imagine that. They had no church down the street. They didn't have any Ten Commandments posted in your front yard. They had nothing. God had to teach them from the ground up. So he gave them Ten Commandments and 615 regulations. Now the New Testament calls it the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? It's impossible to keep it. The curse of the law is the fact that you get up every day and try to be good enough for God because sin demanded a sacrifice so God put in an animal sacrifice the blood of pigeons and goats and doves and bulls and lambs and sheep and everything God put in a sacrificial there had to be the shedding of blood to remove sin he put in a tabernacle he set up a priesthood the high priest would shed the blood of the lamb he'd go in the holy of holies on the day of atonement he would spread the blood for the sins of a nation and for one more year God's wrath would be held back and the people would be spared from God's wrath. Why? Because sin demanded judgment. So blood was the only thing that would be shed for sins. God set that law in motion and it cannot be broken. Well, the Bible prophesied that there would come this lamb that would be slain and he would be the last lamb. And after him, there would be no other lamb. He would be a perfect lamb. He would be a spotless lamb. Oh, come on, somebody. And his name is Jesus Christ. And the prophets foretold about his coming and said that when he came, he would bring a kingdom with him and the government would be upon his shoulders and upon its increase, there would be no end. And the Bible talks about this kingdom whose builder and maker is God. And the Bible says that this kingdom is an unshakable kingdom. In other words, if you ever get it, it will never fail you. Are we on the same page? So what you got to understand is God had to have a standard. He had to have righteous standards. So the people had to get up every morning with 10 commandments and 615 regulations and couldn't break none of them. <clears throat> the Bible said that the law was spiritual. It was God's standard, but we are unspiritual. So in other words, I being sinful and trying to keep the standard of something spiritual but don't have any ability to do it. So it's a curse. Because I wake up every day trying to perform to be good enough to keep something that I never can keep. It's all we're on the same page so far. Okay? But now the Bible says Jesus showed up and he said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I'm going to start messing with your head right here. Okay, I'm, here's where I'm, on, I'm just going to crush church into powder. Okay? We're going to think kingdom. This ain't church. <clears throat> Jesus only mentioned church one time. The word church means called out. There's a lot of things that can be called church. Caesar had a meeting every year in Rome of the governors, and he called it church. Okay? But there ain't but one kingdom. Okay, there's a lot of people that are called out to do a whole lot of things. But there ain't but one kingdom. And you can't even number how many times Jesus talked about the kingdom. So we understand that Jesus showed up and he said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. He said, in other words, he said, all of its standards that you can't keep, I'm going to meet them all. And if you put your faith in me, <laughs> all you have to do is accept me and my sacrifice by faith, and you have met all of God's standards. I need to break something right now. You meeting God's standards has nothing to do with conduct and has nothing to do with behavior. Nothing. It has to do with what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. And if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you may need to repent of some conduct, but your salvation does not come because you're good or bad or behave well or 
behave poorly. You're saved when you behave well. You're saved when you behave poorly. You cannot lose your salvation. I can feel it. I'm going to get a thousand emails. You can't lose it. You can renounce it, but you cannot lose it. The Bible says you are inscribed on the palm of his hand. The day you got saved, God got a new tattoo. And you are saved past, you are saved present, and you are saved future. It's not on my works, it's on his works. And I am saved not because I do a good job, but because Jesus did a good job. And he met all of the commandments, he met all of the traditions, he met all of the 615 laws, he fulfilled it all. Now all I gotta do is put my faith in him and I stand perfected before an old man mighty God. That's enough to make you shout and toss your baby in the air. Yeah. There was no room for him in the end. He wasn't born in a family. He was born by a 15-year-old unwed pregnant teenager. He was born outside the system. Then when he died, the Bible says he died outside the city gates. He died outside the system. But when he died outside the system, he made room for all of us who've been rejected by the system. And I don't care what system has rejected you. There's room in God's system for you. Come on, somebody. I have obtained an inheritance that every day the way I live should complement him and raise the value of my God in other people's minds. Growing Pains by Ron Carpenter. Eight dynamic messages to help you use your pain to strengthen your walk and elevate your praise. Some of you can't praise him because you ain't thinking about the right thing. You're thinking about your next battle. Well, look back at the 150 he's already brought you through. When I think about Jesus. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we will include free shipping. And as an added bonus, we will include a free MP3 download card for your order. That's Growing Pains, plus free shipping and MP3 downloads included free by ordering in the next 10 minutes. That's a $20 value. You. Call now. Visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. No other book in the world could I say that I've committed myself to for 30 years and I'm more inspired by it today than I've ever been. Talking about the Word of God, growing pains, what you're hearing today, I preach in series. I, I get in a topic and I try to work that topic until I feel like I've got a comprehensive look at how God wanted it to be spoken and communicated. And so right here is the full set of the portion of what you're watching today. I would love for you to have this in your archives, whether it be in form of MP3, CD, DVD. I want you to know we always have the whole context of what you hear, a portion of the day. We have the whole set available for you. If you just go right on our online bookstore, it's all there available for you. If you're enjoying what you're watching, what you're hearing, if it's feeding your soul, we would love to put this in your hands. God bless you. Go check out what we have. The title of this is Growing Pains. Post them in your front yard. There's nothing wrong with it. But we're no longer led by the Ten Commandments. Jesus fulfilled all that. Well, don't do nothing on Sunday. That's the Sabbath. No, Jesus said, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. You shouldn't be healing on the Sabbath. Jesus said, I can do anything. I am the Sabbath. I know I'm messing with your head, I can tell. <laughs> the Ten Commandments was a moral code God gave Israel in the Old Testament that was fulfilled in Jesus. And if you accept Jesus, the moral code of God has been pleased in Jesus Christ. So when you repent, repentance is not to ensure that you don't go to hell. Repentance is to ensure that you get your mind right to have the kingdom in the earth. Repent for the kingdom is at hand, not repent so you don't go to hell.
touch your neighbor and say, can't touch this. Can you feel it? Every time I preach the kingdom, you can, it's like a ground swell under you. It just starts swirling and swirling and swirling until you can't take it no more. But when you get the kingdom, you're going to see the enemy come under your feet and you're going to see the stuff that's got you down today. You're going to be standing on it tomorrow. Ah, God, bring your kingdom. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Give me a few more minutes. Now, Hebrews said that the old is a copy. It's a type. It's a shadow. Okay? A shadow, a type, a copy is not the real. It is a result of the real. You can't have a copy unless you've had an original. You can't have a shadow unless you have an object. So the Bible says the tabernacle, the priests, the Old Testament are all types, shadows, copies pointing toward what we live in today called the new. Do you understand everybody in all those pages in the Old Testament longed for what you got on that pew right now? Long for it. Long for a day they would not be burdened with a law they could not keep. But it would all be summed up by just putting your faith in a man named Jesus. They longed for that day. They prophesied about that day. And so you got your types and your shadows. Now, y'all can't see because we got lights everywhere. But somehow in the configuration, I have a shadow right here on this carpet. Okay. When the light hits the real, a shadow is cast. For instance, right here on this carpet, I can see that I am holding up five fingers. But right here between my thumb and index, I have a scar. Every time my wife holds my hand, she picks it. <laughs> y'all wife, why do y'all like to pop bumps and mash things and pick stuff? <laughs> you can't just touch my face. Oh, come here, let me get that one. I got a scar right here, four years old. My mama told me to put the knife down. I didn't do it. I jabbed it down in that muscle. And I got a big scar where I just sliced that open between those two fingers. Now, the shadow lets me see my five fingers, but the shadow does not show me the scar. In other words, the shadow shows me the broad picture but it doesn't give me all the details. So when you open your Bible and read the Old Testament, it's not where you live, but it's pointing to where you live. See, I'm helping you today realize this is how you got to read your Bible. So everything in your Bible, they're typologies, they're typecasts, they're shadows of what is to come. For instance, there is a, there's, a, there's a Moses who is a type of Christ, who walks into Egypt, a type of sin and bondage, and confronts Pharaoh, a type of Satan, and he crushes Pharaoh and delivers people out of their bondage bondage and out of their sin. Do you understand that typology there? And then they cross over the Red Sea. That's water baptism. And when you come out from under Satan and when you come out from sin, we dunk you in the water and you come out a new man. And then they go into the wilderness 40 years. The wilderness does not mean that God is trying to get you out of Egypt. The wilderness is when God's trying to get Egypt out of you. It's when you get saved and you're in here and God has redeemed you from sin, but he's trying to get your mind out of the club. He's trying to get your mind out of Rico's apartment. Come on, he's trying to get your mind away from Shay Shay. He's trying to get your mind out of poverty. Poverty. He's trying to get your mind out of sickness. He's trying to get your mind out of depression. And for Israel, it took 40 years. How long is it going to take you? It's up to you. 
How long do you want to circle your depression? How long you want to circle the way you were brought up? How long you want to circle your victim mentality? How long you want to circle your neighborhood and poverty? How long you want to circle it? God will let you stay in the wilderness as long as your rebellious self wants to. But the day you find the Joshua who says in three days we're coming out, God will let you walk right out. My God, shout hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You listen to Ron Carpenter preach. I don't give you do's and don'ts. Go back and listen to me 10, 20 years. My job is not to give you do's and don'ts. And we say, we, I don't want legalism. I don't want no religious preacher. I don't want to go. But really we do. Let me tell you why. Because as long as we got a guy up here telling us what to do and what not to do, then we don't have to be led. And in the New Testament, it's not rules, regulations, do's, and don'ts. It is be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. It's not my job to put the parameters on your life. It's not my job to give you your convictions. It is the job of the Holy Ghost inside of you to lead you into what's right, to lead you into what's wrong. I am here to develop your relationship with God, not put you under another curse. I'm sorry, I had to take it away from you. We got preachers in pulpit keeping folk under a curse because they tell them what to do and what not to do every day. The Holy Ghost is my teacher. Read your Bible. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Get me off the treadmill. I don't have to perform no more. The Bible says we enter to, we labor to enter our rest. Do you know what the Bible says? That the hardest work will be resting. The greatest labor we will face as a Christian is to rest in the fact Christ already did it and I don't have to. Say it again. You know that's the hardest thing to get into because you've been told, stop, 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 stop. Don't do, don't do, start, don't do, 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 do. And you're like, I don't know if I can live for God or not. I don't know if I've got a good enough life. I don't. You don't have to perform. Jesus performed. And the Bible says his performance pleased God. I've heard preachers talk about how bad it hurt God when Jesus was crucified. Read your Bible. For it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Not because your God is a sadomasochist, but because your God knew at the other end you would be pulled out of performance mode and you could... Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is I'm about to run all the way to Spartanburg and back. My God, I'm preaching. Get that heavy yoke off you. His yoke is easy. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I have obtained an inheritance that every day the way I live should complement him 
and raise the value of my God in other people's minds. Growing Pains by Ron Carpenter. Eight dynamic messages to help you use your pain to strengthen your walk and elevate your praise. Some of you can't praise him because you ain't thinking about the right thing. You're thinking about your next battle. Well, look back at the 150 he's already brought you through. When I think about Jesus. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we will include free shipping. And as an added bonus, we will include a free MP3 download card for your order. That's Growing Pains, plus free shipping and MP3 downloads included free by ordering in the next 10 minutes. That's a $20 value. You. Call now. Visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. I hope that you've been enjoying this broadcast. Um, I always want to reiterate the fact that we do not take lightly the fact that you've given us your time. I've always said you can get another car, you can get another house, you can get some more friends, you can get another job. One thing you'll never get more of is time. So when you give us your time, you've given us the most precious commodity that you have. We're grateful for that. We hope that we're making an investment into your life. I want to say thank you to all of those all the way through 2016 and up till now who've come on since 1998 when we started television and you have helped invest in us. You've sown seed to bring us to this place. <clears throat> we once started in a small warehouse building with a camcorder and local television to being on several channels where we're all over the world but there's still much of the world who've never heard of the message of Jesus or his kingdom. And it's our commission to go get them, to tell them about this message. Would you help me? I'm asking you to just consider becoming a covenant partner. Consider that one-time gift. Maybe if you're not ready to make a long-term commitment, but just a one-time gift to help us do what we do. We really try to be good stewards of the investment, the seeds that people sow and hopefully if you sow, you have seen God bless you richly and abundantly because of it. But we have greater plans, greater vision, greater goals, greater passion, a greater team than we have ever had. And we believe that the future is going to be many, many souls won for Jesus Christ, but we've got to get to them. So would you consider giving today? Thank you so much for what you have done. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your prayers and your financial support. I want you to go and if you would connect with me on Twitter, connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, go check out our online bookstore, go visit our websites. Why? Because we want to talk to you more than just by TV. We want to communicate with you on a daily basis and we're always taking nuggets, prayer times, blogs, doing all kinds of stuff to just speak to you and communicate to you what we feel like God's put in our heart. Until next time, may God richly bless you and may the next time I see you be better than today. We'll see you soon. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. And we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.